English File Pre-Intermediate by Christina Latham Koenig and Clive Oxenden. Published and copyright Oxford University Press 2012. CD 1. 1 1.2. What kind of music do you listen to? Do you play a musical instrument? Which? What TV programmes do you watch? Do you do any sport or exercise? What? What kind of books or magazines do you read? How often do you go to the cinema? What did you do last weekend? 1.3 Do you live with your parents? Did you have a holiday last year? Where does your sister work? When did you start studying English? What did they talk about? 1.4 Are you hungry? Is there a bank near here? What was that noise? Where are you from? Where were you born? 1.5 1. Train A 2. Tree E 3. Egg E 4. Bike I 5. Phone O 6. Boot U 7. Car R 1.6 Train A H J K Tree B C D E G P T V Egg F L M N S X Z Bike I Y Phone O Boot Q U W Car R 1.7 1 What's your name? George How do you spell it? G E O R G E 2 What's your name? Celia. That's a pretty name. How do you spell it? C-E-L-I-A. Three. What's your name? Wayne Roberts. How do you spell your first name? W-A-Y-N-E. Four. What's your name? Katie. Is that K-A-T-Y? No, it's K-A-T-I-E. Five. What's your name? Hannah. So Sorry, Hannah or Anna? Hannah, with an H. H-A-N-N-A-H.
Six. What's your name? Christopher. How do you spell it? C H R I S T O P H E R. 1.8. One. Passengers on the British Airways flight to Barbados, please go to gate number 40 where this flight is ready to board. Two. How far is it from London to Manchester? I'm not sure. Let's Google it. Ah, it says here 181 miles. Three. Hello? It's Ben. I'm at the station. Do you have Nicola's mobile number? Uh, yes. Just a moment. Okay. It's 0792-9618-847. 0792-9618-847. That's right. Four. Where do you live in Ireland? I live in a village near Dublin. How big is it? It's quite small. The population is only about 2,500 people. Five. Can I have two Cokes and a mineral water, please? Two Cokes? Yes, and a mineral water. How much is that? Six pounds fifteen. Sorry, 50 or 15? 15. Six pounds 15. 1.9. Tell me about Molly. What does she look like? She's quite tall and she has short dark hair. It's very curly. And she has brown eyes and a beautiful smile. Aww. And what's she like? She's really nice, very friendly and extrovert. She's got lots of friends. I'm sure you're going to like her. 1.10 Appearance 2 She has curly red hair. 3 She has long straight hair. 1 She has big blue eyes. Six. She has dark wavy hair. Five. He has a beard and a moustache. Four. He's bald. Seven. He's very tall and thin. Nine. He's quite short and a bit overweight. Eight. He's medium height and quite slim. 1.11. Personality. 1. Friendly. Unfriendly. 2. Talkative. Quiet. 3. Generous. Mean. Four. Kind. Unkind. Five. Lazy. Hard working. Six. Funny. Serious. Seven. Clever. Stupid. Eight. Shy. Extrovert. One point twelve. I usually work at home. They don't live near here. Do you speak French? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Holly knows me very well. 
It doesn't often rain here. Does Alice like jazz? Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. 1.13 1. One. We often go out on Friday night. She doesn't usually study at weekends. I'm never ill. He's always late for work. 2. She gets up early every day. We have English classes twice a week. 1.14 My first impression of Alexander was that he was much older than me. In fact, he was 32, but I thought he was older. But when we started talking, I really liked him. He was extrovert and funny, and he had a very good sense of humour. He works for a TV company, and he told me a lot of good stories about his work. He was also interested in the same things as me, art and music, and we talked a lot about that. Physically, he wasn't really my type. It's difficult to say why. He was tall and dark and quite good-looking, and he had a nice smile, but there just wasn't any chemistry between us. I could imagine going to a concert or theatre with him, but as a friend. Sorry, Mum, but no. 1.15 when I first saw Oliver, I thought he looked warm and friendly and more attractive than Alexander. He was quite tall, with short blonde hair, and he had lovely blue eyes, a bit like the actor Jude Law. He was a bit shy and quiet at first, but when we started chatting he relaxed and we found we had a lot of things in common. We both liked books and the cinema. He was generous, too. He wanted to pay for everything. I really enjoyed the evening. When it was time to go, he asked for my phone number and said he wanted to meet again. We walked out of the restaurant and went to look for a taxi. And then something happened, and I knew that it was impossible for me to go out with him. He said, at last, and took out a packet of cigarettes. That was it, I'm afraid. I could never have a boyfriend who was a smoker. I think perhaps for my next date, I'm going to choose the man myself. <laughs> I don't think another person can really choose a partner for you. 1.16 Snake S She likes cats. He works with his parents. Zebra. Z. He has brown eyes. She wears jeans. Is. She relaxes with boxes of chocolates. He uses glasses to read. 1.17 Verbs Chooses Cooks Goes Lives Stops Teaches Nouns Boys Classes Dates Friends Languages Parents 1.18 Song Ugly
I was seven, they said I was strange. I noticed that my eyes and hair weren't the same. I asked my parents if I was okay. They said you're more beautiful and that's the way. They showed that they wish that they had your smile. So my confidence was up for a while. I got real comfortable with my own style. I knew that they were only jealous cause people are all the same. And we only get judged by what we do. Personality reflects name. And if I'm ugly, then so are you. So are you. One point nineteen. Things you wear. Clothes. Twelve. Cardigan. Three. Coat. Two. Dress. Nine. Jacket. Five. Jeans. Eight. Shirt. One. Shorts. Six. Skirt. Seven. Suit. Fourteen. Sweater. Four. Top. Ten. Tracksuit. Eleven. Trousers. Thirteen. T-shirt. Footwear. Eighteen. Boots. Nineteen. Flip flops. Sixteen. Sandals. Seventeen. Shoes. Fifteen. Trainers. Accessories. Twenty one. Belt. Twenty five. Cap. Twenty seven. Hat. Twenty six. Leggings. Twenty three. Gloves. Twenty four. Scarf. Twenty eight. Socks. Twenty two. Tie. Twenty.
tights. Jewelry. Thirty. Bracelet. Twenty-nine. Earrings. Thirty-two. Necklace. Thirty-one. Ring. One point twenty. One. Computer. A.、Uh. Trousers. Trainers. Sandals. Sweater. Cardigan. Two. Bird. A.、Uh. Shirt. Skirt. T-shirt. One point twenty-one. Actor. Cinema. First. Painter. Third. Arrive. Fashion. World. University. Picture. Working. Prefer. One point twenty-two. One. What are you doing? I'm sending a message to Sarah. Two. My brother is doing a two-month course in the UK. Three. In this picture, the woman is standing near the window. One point twenty-three. What do you do? I work for Microsoft. What are you doing? I'm checking my emails. One point twenty-four. Mr. and Mrs. Clark and Percy is by the British artist David Hockney, and it's considered to be one of the greatest British paintings of the twentieth century. It was painted in 1971, and it's a portrait of two of his friends, Ozzy Clark and his wife Celia, and their cat Percy. Ozzy Clark and Celia were fashion designers, and they had a very successful clothes shop in London. In the 1960s, they dressed a lot of the famous pop stars of the time, including the Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton. Hockney painted Ozzy and Celia a few months after they got married in their flat at Notting Hill in London. He painted them in their bedroom because he liked the light there, and on the wall on the left of the window, you can see one of his own paintings. Mister and Missus Clark and Percy is a very big painting, approximately three meters wide and two meters high. The couple are wearing typical clothes of the late 1960s. Celia is wearing a long dress, and in fact, she was expecting a baby at that time. Her husband isn't wearing any shoes, and he's putting his feet into the carpet. This was because Hockney had a lot of problems painting his feet. He just couldn't get them right. Hockney said that his aim with this painting. Was to paint the relationship between the two people. Traditionally, when a painter paints a married couple, the woman is sitting down and the man is standing up. In this painting, the man is sitting and the woman is standing. Usually, in a painting, the married couple are close together, but in this painting, they're separated by a big open window, which symbolises the distance between them. The white cat sitting on Mr. Clark is a symbol of infidelity. It seems that Hockney didn't think that their marriage was going to be very happy, and in fact, the couple got divorced four years later. Celia often posed as a model for Hockney, but she says that this painting, his most famous picture of her, is not her favourite. She said, "It's a wonderful painting, but it makes me look too heavy." In 1996, 25 years after this picture was painted, Ozzy Clark died. He was murdered by his lover in his Kensington flat. 
1.25 1. There are two people in the room. 2. The woman is standing on the left and the man is sitting on the right. 3. In the middle of the painting, between the man and the woman, there's an open window. 4. A white cat is sitting on the man. 5. There's a carpet under the man's chair. 6. There's a telephone on the floor behind the man's chair. 7. Next to the telephone, there's a lamp. 8. In front of the woman, there's a table and a vase with flowers in it. 1.26 My name's Jenny Zielinski. I live and work in New York. I'm the assistant editor of a magazine called New York 24-7. A few months ago, I visited our office in London to learn more about the company. I met the manager, Daniel O'Connor. I had lots of meetings with him, of course and a working dinner on my birthday. But I spent more time with Rob Walker. He's one of the writers on the London magazine. We had coffees together. We went sightseeing. I even helped Rob buy a shirt. He was fun to be with. I liked him a lot. I think he liked me too. Rob isn't the most punctual person in the world but he is a great writer. We invited him to work for the New York magazine for a month, and he agreed. So now Rob's coming to New York. I know he's really excited about it. It's going to be great to see him again. 1.27 Hello, reception. Hello, this is room 613. How can I help you? There's a problem with the air conditioning. It isn't working, and it's very hot in my room. I'm sorry, sir. I'll send somebody up to look at it right now. Thank you. Good evening, reception. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you again. This is room 613. I have a problem with the Wi-Fi. I can't get a signal. I'm sorry, sir. I'll put you through to IT. Thanks. 1.28 Hello, reception. Hello, this is room 613. How can I help you? There's a problem with the air conditioning. It isn't working, and it's very hot in my room. I'm sorry, sir. I'll send somebody up to look at it right now. Thank you. 1.29 Good evening, reception. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you again. This is room 613. How can I help you? I have a problem with the Wi-Fi. I can't get a signal. I'm sorry, sir. I'll put you through to IT. Thanks. One point twenty-nine. So, here you are, in New York at last. Yeah. It's great to be here. It's really exciting. And how's your hotel? It's fine. My room is really nice. Do you have a good view from your room? I can see lots of other buildings. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to show you around the office and introduce you to the team. Barbara's looking forward to meeting you. You remember Barbara. 
My boss. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then you can start thinking about your blog and the column. Have you got any ideas yet, Rob? Rob? What? Sorry, Jenny. <sighs> you must be really tired. Yes, I am a bit. What time is it now? It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? That's two o'clock in the morning for me. Oh, let's finish our drinks. You need to go to bed. I guess you're right. So I'll see you in the office at 11 in the morning. At 11? Is that okay? It's perfect. Thanks, Jenny. There's just one thing. What's that? Don't be late. By the way, it's great to see you again. Yeah. It's great to see you too. 1.30 Here you are at last. It's great to be here. Do you have a good view? Barbara's looking forward to meeting you. You must be really tired. I guess you're right. By the way. It's great to see you too. 1.31 Phrases with go. 10. Go abroad. 1. Go away for the weekend. 6. Go by bus. Go by car. Go by plane. Go by train. 2. Go camping. 4. Go for a walk. 3. Go on holiday. 8. Go out at night. 5. Go sightseeing. 7. Go skiing. Go walking. Go cycling. 9. Go swimming. Go sailing. Go surfing. 1.32 Other holiday activities Stay in a hotel. Stay at a campsite. Stay with friends. Take photos. Buy souvenirs. Sunbathe on the beach. Have a good time. Spend money. Spend time. Rent an apartment. Hire a bicycle. Hire skis. Book flights. Book hotels online. 1.33 Adjectives 1. What was the weather like? It was warm. It was sunny. It was very windy. It was foggy. It was cloudy. 2. What was the hotel like? It was comfortable. It was luxurious. It was basic. It was dirty. It was uncomfortable. 3. What was the town like? It was beautiful. It was lovely. It was noisy. It was crowded. 4. What were the people like? They were friendly. They were helpful. They were unfriendly. They were unhelpful. 5. What was the food like? It was delicious. It was nothing special. It was disgusting. 1.34 Mia 
It was a really terrible holiday. It was my fault. I mean, I wanted to go to Thailand, but I knew before I went that I didn't really want to have a serious relationship with Joe. And the holiday just showed how different we are. He irritated me all the time. He wanted to stay in some really cheap hostels because he thought the hotels were too expensive. I didn't want five-star luxury, but when I go on holiday, I want to be comfortable. The places where Joe wanted to stay were very basic and had very small rooms. There's nothing worse than being in a very small room with someone when you're not getting on very well. Another thing I didn't like was that Joe got very jealous. When you're travelling, part of the fun is talking to other travellers, but he hated it if I talked to other people, especially other men. And then he kept taking photos, hundreds of them. Every time we saw a monument, he said, go and stand over there so I can take a photo. I hate being in photos. I just wanted to enjoy the sights. The holiday was all a big mistake. Never go on holiday with a boyfriend if you're not sure about the relationship. It's sure to be a disaster. 1.35 Linda Oh, it was a wonderful holiday. I loved every moment. Venice is just a paradise. We did everything. We went on a gondola... We saw all the museums and we had some fantastic meals. And, you know, everyone says that Venice is expensive, but I didn't think it was. It wasn't an expensive holiday at all. I thought it was quite reasonable. We all got on very well. I think I'm going to suggest to Isabel and Laura that we go on holiday together again next year. 1.36 I stayed with friends. I didn't stay in a hotel. Did you stay for the weekend? Yes, I did. Where did you stay? We went to Brazil on holiday. We didn't go to Sao Paulo. Did you go to Rio? No, we didn't. Why did you go there? 1.37 Thai T We booked a holiday. We walked around the town. Dog D We sunbathed on the beach. We argued about everything. Id. We rented a flat. We decided to break up. One point thirty eight. Arrived. Asked. Ended. Invited. Liked. Loved. Needed. Parked. Started. Stayed. 1.39 At 8.45 last Saturday, I was working in my office. I wasn't doing anything important. My friends were having breakfast. They weren't working. Was it raining when you got up? No, it wasn't. What were you doing at 11 o'clock last night? I was watching TV. 1.40 I was working in my office when the boss walked in. I was having lunch when my sister arrived. 1.41 Oh. Oh. oh no.
two. Hello? Three. Police! Open the door! Four. Five. <sighs> you go. Okay. Six. Here, boy. Come on, here, boy. Oh, hi. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you for ages. One point forty two. At. In. On. One. In. In France. In Paris, in the kitchen, in a shop, in a museum, in a park, in a garden, in a car. In February, in June, in winter, in 2011, in the morning. In the afternoon. In the evening. Two. On. On a bike. On a bus. On a train. On a plane. On a ship. On the floor. On a table. On a shelf. On the balcony. On the roof. On the wall. On the 1st of March. On Tuesday. On New Year's Day. On Valentine's Day. 3. At. At school. At home. At work. At university. At the airport. At the station, at a bus stop, at a party, at the door, at six o'clock, at half past two, at seven forty five, at Christmas, at Easter, at night, at the weekend. 1.43 Where were you at six o'clock in the evening? I was at work. What were you doing? I was having a meeting with the boss. 1.44 En mai 1968, je suis rentré à Paris. In May 1968, I came back to Paris. It was a very exciting time. There were a lot of demonstrations and fighting between students and the police. I wasn't really interested in politics. I wasn't a communist or an anarchist. But I loved the atmosphere. All the students were fighting for freedom, for revolution, and the French police were everywhere. On May the 15th, I was with thousands of other young people. We were walking towards the Place de la Bastille. I was tired, so a friend picked me up and I sat on his shoulders. Another boy, who was walking next to us, was carrying a Vietnamese flag. It was the time of the Vietnam War. And he said to me, Hey, could you carry the flag for me? And I said, OK. There was so much happening that I didn't notice all the photographers. The next day, the photo was on the cover of magazines all over the world. When my grandfather saw it, 
He immediately ordered me to come to his house. He was furious, really, really angry. He said, that's it, you're a communist. I'm not going to leave you anything, not a penny. I walked out of the room and I never saw him again. Six months later he died and I didn't get any money from him. Nothing. 1.45 Hannah met Jamie in the summer of 2010. It was Hannah's 21st birthday and she and her friends went to a club. They wanted to dance, but they didn't like the music, so Hannah went to speak to the DJ. This music is awful, <laughs> she said. Could you play something else? The DJ looked at her and said, Don't worry, I have the perfect song for you. Two minutes later, he said, The next song is by Scouting for Girls. It's called Blue as Your Eyes, and it's for a beautiful girl who's dancing over there. Hannah knew that the song was for her. When Hannah and her friends left the club, the DJ was waiting for her at the door. Hi, I'm Jamie, he said to Hannah. Can I see you again? So Hannah gave him her phone number. Next day, Jamie phoned Hannah and invited her to dinner. He took her to a very romantic French restaurant and they talked all evening. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, but you were throwing some amazing shapes though. I mean, I just couldn't stop looking at you. <laughs> oh, shut up. Although the food wasn't very good, they had a wonderful time. After that, Jamie and Hannah saw each other every day. Every evening when Hannah finished work, they met at 5.30 in a coffee bar in the high street. They were madly in love. One evening in October, Hannah was at work. As usual, she was going to meet Jamie at 5.30. It was dark and it was raining. She looked at her watch. It was 5.20. She was going to be late. She ran to her car and got in. At 5.25, she was driving along the high street. She was going very fast because she was in a hurry. Suddenly, a man ran across the road. He was wearing a dark coat, so Hannah didn't see him at first. Quickly, she put her foot on the brake. One point forty-six. On our first date, we went to the cinema. After that, we started meeting every day. On Thursday, I had an argument with my boss. Next day, I decided to look for a new job. We sat down to eat. Two minutes later, the phone rang. When I came out of the club, he was waiting for me. The accident happened when I was crossing the road. 1.47 she was driving fast because she was in a hurry. She was in a hurry, so she was driving fast. 1.48 She tried to stop the car, but she hit the man. Although she tried to stop the car, she hit the man. She was very tired, but she couldn't sleep. She couldn't sleep, although she was very tired. 1.49 Across After Again Along Although Awful Because Birthday Evening.
Invite. Perfect. Second. 1.50. Happy ending. Suddenly, a man ran across the road. He was wearing a dark coat, so Hannah didn't see him at first. Quickly, she put her foot on the brake. She stopped just in time. She got out of her car and shouted at the man. Don't you usually look before you cross the road? I nearly hit you. I didn't see you until the last moment. Sorry. Hey, Hannah, it's me. It's Jamie. Jamie? What are you doing here? I nearly killed you. <laughs> I was buying something. I was in a hurry and I crossed the road without looking. Come on. Get in. <laughs> Hannah and Jamie drove to the coffee bar. They sat down in their usual seats and ordered two cups of coffee. Here you are. Two cappuccinos. Thank you. Thanks. What an evening. I nearly killed you. <laughs> well, you didn't kill me. So... What's the problem? But what were you doing in the high street? I thought you were here, in the cafe, waiting for me. I went to the theatre to buy these tickets for the Scouting for Girls concert. I know you wanted to go. Oh. And it's on the 15th of October, next Saturday, our anniversary. Our anniversary? Yes. Three months since we first met. We met on Saturday the 15th of July, remember? Oh, gosh, Jamie. I can't believe you remember the exact day. <laughs> what a romantic. It's lucky I didn't hit you in the street. 1.51 Sad ending. Suddenly, a man ran across the road. He was wearing a dark coat so Hannah didn't see him at first. Quickly, she put her foot on the brake. Although Hannah tried to stop, she couldn't. She hit the man. Hannah panicked. She drove away as fast as she could. When she arrived at the coffee bar, Jamie wasn't there. She called him, but his mobile phone was turned off. She waited for ten minutes, and then she went home. Two hours later, a car arrived at Hannah's house. A policewoman knocked at the door. Good evening, madam. Are you Hannah Davis? Yes, I am. I'd like to speak to you. Can I come in? The policewoman came in and sat down on the sofa. Are you a friend of Jamie Dixon? Yes, said Hannah. Well, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. What? What's happened? Jamie had an accident this evening. Oh, no! What kind of accident? He was crossing the road and a car hit him. When... when did this happen? And where? This evening at 25 past five. He was crossing the road in the high street by the theatre. Oh, no! How is he? He's in hospital. He's got a bad injury to his head and two broken legs. But is he going to be OK? We don't know. He's in intensive care. Oh, no! And the driver of the car? She didn't stop. <gasps> She? Yes, it was a woman in a white car. Somebody saw the number of the car. You have a white car outside, don't you, madam? Is your number plate XYZ348S? Yes. Yes, it is. Can you tell me where you were at 25 past five this evening?
1.52 Song Blue as your eyes I'm a going insane You scratched on my heart You scratched on my heart You etched on my brain 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 And every word Every word that you said goes round Round in my head Round like a cyclone in my mind One point fifty three. Justin. Who do you look like in your family? I looked more like my mother when I was younger. Now I look like my father. Joanna. Do you have a favorite painting? Can you describe it? Yes, it's、um, a life-size painting of a horse that's standing on its back legs. It's by a painter called Whistler. Sarah Jane. Where did you go for your last holiday? Italy and France. Did you have a good time? Yes. Why?、Um, I went with my parents, and we travelled quite extensively, and we ate lots of local food, and we saw quite a lot of museums and art galleries. David, do you take a lot of photos? I don't, but my wife does. What does she take photos of? Mostly buildings and some of me. She doesn't like to be in photos herself, so I have to do all the modelling. Andy, do you prefer films with a happy or sad ending? I quite like ones with sad endings, actually. Why? Um, I have no particular reason why. It's just in general, the films I like tend to have sad endings. One point fifty four, three. Arrivals. Seven. Baggage drop off. One. Baggage reclaim. Nine. Check in. Eight. Customs. Two. 
Departures. 11. Gates. 5. Lifts. 10. Passport control. 4. Terminal. 12. Toilets. 6. Trolley. 1.55. Olivia. Excuse me, do you have a moment? Yes, sure. Where are you going? To Nicaragua. For a holiday? No, I'm going to do voluntary work. I'm going to teach English to young children. Where exactly in Nicaragua are you going? To a town called Esteli. It's about 150 kilometres from Managua. How long are you going to be there for? I'm going to be in Esteli for six weeks, and after that I'm going to travel around Nicaragua for a month. That sounds amazing. Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you feeling nervous at all? A bit, because I don't speak much Spanish. But they're going to give us a 40-hour language course when we arrive, so I hope that's enough to start with. Well, good luck and have a great time. Thanks. I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic experience. Matthew Excuse me, do you have a moment? Yeah, OK. Where are you going? To Australia. That's a long flight. Are you going to stop on the way? No, I'm going direct to Melbourne. Why Melbourne? I'm going to work there. I'm a model and we're going to do a photo shoot for a magazine. That sounds exciting. What kind of clothes are you going to model? Winter clothes, for next season. It's winter in Australia now, so it's going to be quite cold. That's why we're going there. Of course, it's their winter. How cold do you think it's going to be? I'm not quite sure. About eight or nine degrees during the day and colder at night, I suppose. Well, have a good trip. And I hope the photos are fabulous. Thanks. Lily. Excuse me, do you have a moment? OK, sure. Where are you going? To Budapest. Why are you going there? I'm going to a conference. So it's a work trip? Yes. But I'm also going to see an old friend there. Actually, an old boyfriend. Someone I went out with a long time ago. When did you decide to meet up again? Well, I knew he was working at Budapest University. So when the conference came up about a month ago, I got in touch with him on Facebook. Is he going to meet you at the airport? I don't think so. But who knows? How do you feel about it? Quite excited. It's going to be strange meeting again after all these years. Well, good luck. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. And enjoy the conference, too. Thanks very much. 1.56 1. I'm going to teach English to young children. 2. How long are you going to be there for? 3. It's winter in Australia now, so it's going to be quite cold. 4. Is he going to meet you at the airport? 5. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. 1.57 1. I'm going to work for an NGO. He's going to meet me at the airport. 2. I'm sure England are going to lose tomorrow. It's going to rain tonight. 1.58 1. What are you going to do tonight? 2. Are you going to see a film? 3. I'm going to cook a meal for you. 4. I think it's going to rain. 5. We aren't going to have a holiday this year. 1.59 1. It's going to be difficult. 
two. What are we going to do now? Three. Is it going to rain? Four. Where are we going to go? Five. They aren't going to come. Six. What's going to happen? 1.60. Song. <laughs> In the morning, and your head feels twice the size. Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna sleep tonight? And you're singing the songs, thinking this is the life. And you wake up in the morning, and your head feels twice the size. Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna sleep tonight? And you're singing the songs, thinking this is the life. And you wake up in the morning, and your head feels twice the size. Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna go? Where you're gonna sleep tonight? One point sixty one. The third of May. The twelfth of August, twenty twelve. The thirty first of December. The twenty second of June. The fifth of February. The twentieth of July, nineteen ninety eight. One point sixty two. This is Ben West. Sorry, I can't take your call. Please leave a message. Hi, Ben. It's me, Lily. I hope you're okay. I've booked my flight and hotel. I'm coming on Sunday, the second of May. I couldn't get a flight on the first. I'm flying from Gatwick with EasyJet, and I'm arriving at Budapest Airport at fourteen forty. I'm going back on Saturday, the eighth. Leaving at sixteen thirty-five. I'm staying at a lovely old hotel, quite a famous one, I think. It's called the Hotel Gellert or Gellert. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's G E L L E R T. I'm sure you know it. I'll call you on Sunday night when I get there. See you soon. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. One point sixty-three. One, I'm flying from Gatwick with EasyJet. Two, I'm arriving at Budapest Airport at fourteen forty. Three, 
I'm staying at a lovely old hotel. 1.64 I'm seeing a friend tonight. She's arriving at lunchtime. She isn't leaving until Friday. They aren't coming to the party. What are you doing this evening? Is she meeting us at the restaurant? 1.65 Hello? Hi, Ben. It's me. Lily, how are you? How was your flight? Oh, fine. No problems at all. Are you at the hotel? Yes, and it's wonderful. It's got these amazing baths. Yes, I know. I've been there. So, when can we meet? Let's see. Well, tonight's impossible. I'm seeing Paul, a Hungarian friend. He invited me to dinner ages ago. That's fine. I'm a bit tired anyway. How about tomorrow? I'm meeting students during the day, but I'm free in the evening. I've got a conference dinner tomorrow night. Are you doing anything on Tuesday night? Sorry, but I'm playing tennis with three of my friends. Ah. Oh. We always play on Tuesday nights, so I can't cancel it. And I'm going to Vienna on Wednesday, like I told you, and I don't get back till very late, so Wednesday's out. What about Thursday night? A Thursday's fine. Are you going to take me to that restaurant you mentioned? Restaurant? Yes, yes, of course. And then perhaps you can show me round a bit on Friday. I'm free in the afternoon. The conference finishes at lunchtime. Sorry, Friday afternoon's no good. I'm going to the dentist at four. Oh, poor you. But maybe after dinner on Thursday we can go for a walk and you can see Budapest at night. Great. I can pick you up at the hotel at about 7.30. Is that OK? Perfect. See you there. Looking forward to it. It's ages since I last saw you. Bye. 1.66 Hi, Lily. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Not too tired from the conference? No, I'm fine. You look really well. Just the same as always. <laughs> Thanks. You too. Right. Where are we going? A restaurant called Tigris. It's really good. Wonderful. Let's go then. My car's outside. That one there. The blue Fiat. Uh, this is um, Erica. She's my... Hello, Lily. So nice to meet you. Ben has told me a lot about you. Hi, Erica. Come on then, girls. Get in. Let's go! One point sixty seven. Would you like to go out for dinner? I'd love to. Are you free on Thursday? Sorry, I'm going to the cinema. What about Friday? What are you doing then? Nothing. Friday is fine. OK. Let's go to the new Italian place. Great. 1.68 Verbs plus prepositions 1. I arrived in Paris on Friday night. 2. I was very tired when I arrived at the hotel. 3. I hate waiting for people who are late. 4. What are you going to do at the weekend? I don't know. It depends on the weather. 5. I'm sorry. But I really don't agree with you. 6. I asked for a chicken sandwich, but this is tuna. 7. Let's invite Debbie and Tim to the party.
Eight. Who's going to pay for the meal? Nine. I need to speak to Martin about the meeting. Ten. I don't spend much money on food. Eleven. Are you going to write to him soon? Twelve. Don't worry about the exam. It isn't very hard. Thirteen. She fell in love with a man she met on the internet. Fourteen. You're not listening. What are you thinking about? Fifteen. What do you think of Shakira? I really like her. I think she's great.